press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Jitendra Singh, India's Minister of State for Atomic Energy, has said that Nuclear Power Corporation of India has been in discussions with Westinghouse Electric Company to arrive at a project proposal for setting up nuclear power plants in India. Westinghouse is already struggling to win more business for the AP-1000 reactor. India's continuation with talks may be conciliatory, as the job has become much harder after the suspension of two of the four reactors in the US due to spiraling costs. In March 2017, Westinghouse had filed bankruptcy protection, which created a wider financial crisis to its owner, Toshiba. Indian Prime Minister Modi and former US President Barack Obama had agreed to work towards finalizing the contractual arrangements for six reactors by mid-2017. But the techno-commercial aspects of the six units of the AP-1000 reactors have not been completed till now, which is essential for finalization of the deal. India has a requirement for 120 to 130 swing roll planes with stealth features for increased survivability, advanced avionics, top-end mission computers and 360-degree situational awareness. The FGFA would be powered by the second-stage engine of the T-50, which is still under development. It is being developed using AL-41 F1 engine, which will also power the initial production lot. The second-stage engine, unofficially referred to as Product 30, is expected to start flight trials in end 2017. It is considered that compared to the AL-41 F1, the new engine is 30% lighter, features improved thrust, better fuel efficiency, and lesser moving parts, and 30% lower life cycle cost. Highly efficient supercruise engine puts an end to the concern earlier raised by the Indian Air Force about the engine power of the T-50. After successfully launching its heaviest rocket, GSLV Mk-3, capable of carrying humans to space, India has begun work on building a vehicle to take man deep into the ocean. A team of scientists at National Institute of Ocean Technology is ready with a preliminary design for the country's first man-submersible vehicle that can accommodate a three-member crew expected to be ready in five years at a cost of 500 crore rupees. It will be able to take scientists about six kilometers deep into the ocean to look for precious metals and lesser known life forms. Once the vehicle is ready, India will join an elite group of nations, sending man underwater in a craft. At present, only US, Russia, France, Japan, and China have conducted man deep sea expeditions. According to a senior Navy official, the Indian Navy is facing acute maintenance problems with the 45 Russian MiG-29K fighters, which are the sole fighters on the aircraft carrier INS Vikramaditya. The Navy wants the MiG-29K to be improved to carry out operations. The call for improved ruggedness originates from an issue after deck landings. The MiG-29K fighters' settings reportedly need a reset after landing on the deck of the carrier. The service did not enter into a contract for automatic maintenance of the aircraft with the Russians while purchasing the MiG-29K aircraft in 2004 and 2010 for $2.2 billion. The Indian Ministry of Defense has taken up the matter with Russia on several occasions. Although Russia sent technical teams, no solution has been forthcoming. According to reports, since induction in February 2010, 40 engines of twin-engine MiG-29K fighters have been withdrawn from service due to design-related defects, which accounts to 62% of the aircrafts. According to a landmark agreement, which was signed last week, Sri Lanka's Hambantoto port is officially China's own port for the next 99 years. 
It gives China merchant port holdings, 70% stake, in the Indian Ocean's prominent outpost. The Hambant Dota port expansion, begun with loans from China, but when Sri Lanka could not pay back the loans, China converted the loans to equity. The taking over of the port by China, is bad news for both Pakistan and India, for different reasons. Like Hambant Dota, CPEC also started with loans, that will eventually be converted into equity, as it seems very unlikely, that Pakistan, will ever be in a position to pay back the loans. This means, that China will one day own CPEC, and collect tolls from every vehicle, that makes use of it. For New Delhi, the Hambant Dota deal is bad news, because it's one more step by China, to encircle and pacify India.